bounce off your legs. Just go that far. Yeah. Hello, we're from Slough Wrestling Club and we've been exploring the history of Punjabi wrestling, a history that goes back hundreds of years. We have been interviewing wrestlers, young and old, to hear their stories and experiences. We hope you enjoy this film. Wrestling's got the highest Punjabi um, participation of any sport, of the 29 sports in the Olympic Games, in, in Great Britain. At one time, about 25% of the wrestlers in the British Wrestling Association were of Punjabi origin. I listened to my father's stories of um, Punjabi wrestling when guests came around and when on at weekends of le legendary matches in Punjab and the legendary wrestlers of Punjab. And that must have had an effect on my subconscious mind because that stayed at the back of my mind whilst I was growing up. I think our parents wanted us to earn that respect and be strong. So they pushed us in, into this kind of sport, you know, and uh, you, you get a good, get a good name in the community. It's, it's in our culture and it's in our religion. Our gurus have told us that, you know, you should wrestle, grapple. So being Sikh, when you start learning about a religion and history and reading, you know, it's there. Asli, jeli kosti nikli ta jida thon dasya me apne sekha jo hiya hai. Thik hai na? Te Hanuman ta ek bada takna ko banda hoya hun mere khel dahyaar saal hunu hoye nu bhi ho gaya hune ya. Ko pata ta ola kahe nu hai nii. Hun o photo a odiya jaroor lanya ya hunu log matha bhi take ki jaan thebe Hanuman da khada. Bahe asi Hanuman de khade di koi reality bali dekhan sone jine saade aaj. In Sikhi, it's always about doing combat sports. Uh, Gatka or doing uh, wrestling was a big part in Sikhism. Our gurus did wrestling, they did archery, they did combats. Uh, there was always always learning about self-defense. So in that aspect, it was a very good, um, it was an important aspect of Sikhi to do it. The, the golden age of Punjabi wrestling was from 1857, but it peaked in 1910, 11, and then through to the 30s, just up to partition. Like boxers in this country, from old, old boxers like Ali and Henry Cooper, and other names like that, old folk remember old wrestlers' names like Mesumpuriya, Hukum Singh, Mesumpuriya, Gurdavar Pehlwan, the great tiger, Dolla, the great tiger from uh, Garshankar, which is near us, and they would talk about the matches. Do you remember that match? And they were grudge matches, mm -hmm. and it was a, it was a very um, it was a, it, it was it was intense rivalry was between regions and religions, and that brought it to a uh, th these would come to a frenzy during the season of competition, almost to to death. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of um, rivalry existed in in uh, pre-partition Punjab. If you go back to Punjab, everyone wrestled. You got, you know, you got a lot of respect if he was a wrestler. You know, Palwan. You got a lot of respect if he was a kabaddi player. You know, and these sports they gave you strength and respect. Palwan, the body respect kar de hum dekhe sare. Jeda changa halle da munda utda hi na, udhi sport udda bhi kar de hiye karo halka ya the onu ke ko bhi lagke de na. Do 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 bhi jeda changa le mera karna tu ethe do gar mein do dinya le jaya kar. वो ऐसा उधर लोग स्पोर्ट बहुत कर रहे हैं बुलवाने दी बुलवाने रही था यहाँ चंगे यहाँ लोग कहाँ देखा करके रही या इन द पंजाब इफ अ इफ अ पंजाबी हैड थ्री सन्स वन वुड गो टू द आर्मी वन वुड डू फार्मिंग वन वुड डू टिपिकली रेसलिंग वेल आई मीन आई हैड कन्व इन द विलेज एस यंग पीपल देर इज दिस literally a kind of associated with people who were kind of physically kind of big 
in, in the villages. Yeah, my dad was from a, a little village called Pragpur, which is uh, the biggest city is Jalandhar in the Punjab. Again, traditionally, he, you know, he, the, the, the competitions that they had with wrestling was village against village um, and see who the, the champion is in the area. When my dad talks about his brothers and his granddad, he said, you know, they all competed in sport. They, they all you know, did wrestling. Even if it was a competitive level, they did it at home. It's like playing football in your back garden. I was in the village. I was so lucky. We used to have a mela like a fair, uh, wrestling mela uh, in uh, July of every year. And from there, we uh, always try to imitate the wrestlers and try to do some exercises and do some uh, wrestling. When I was younger, in winter times, there was no work in the, in the fields, no farming work, free time, except looking after the animals. And they, they fill up the bags with the sand and start lifting the weights. So one on that side, one on the other. And then they lift up the mudgar, like that. They did uh, uh, some wrestling sometimes. If there was somebody who wants to wrestle somebody, they said, yeah, come on, do it. Those days, all the youngsters, they used to get together and go to these hakadas and do exercises. And those, mainly in those days, the exercises used to be squats and dips. And they didn't have this uh, modern uh, uh, facilities as we have today, the gyms and weightlifting and so on. So they used to do like these free exercises. Generally, the kind of uh, position was that if you saw that a kid that was slightly stronger, uh, people would kind of comment and encourage that he's got the makings of a Palawan. Because remember, it's only kind of agriculture and farming are the only, there's no other kind of jobs in the villages. So you work on the land and this, this was a kind of an outlet and which gave you, it was a gateway to a, a totally different world. My father, all his life he was a wrestler. He was a court wrestler to the Maharaja of Amethi for nine years. The, the Maharajas were all in competition with each other for sports, tiger hunting, uh, wrestling, long jump, running, etc. They would have competitions. This was a competition, the, the, the Maharaja of Patala, for example, who had the strongest uh, akada and troop of wrestlers. A top wrestler would win prestige, and there was fame and fortune. Fortunes were mostly for the heavyweights. The heavyweight champion of India would be a wealthy man. The word Palawan, uh, you know, symbolized more than just a sport. Uh, it defined, you know, villages were put on the map by virtue of a particular Palawan. Uh, so the family status would kind of rise. The rules haven't changed in Kushti wrestling since the Mughal Empire and you know we're talking hundreds of years so they're still carrying out that same wrestling the same rules the same timekeeping and the same concept of wrestling the ritual is that you go into this ring it's like the gladiators ring and the first action that you do is to touch basically mother earth pick up a bit of soil and you rub your hands. The rules are simple. It's very straightforward. You, you match and mutually agree to a match and you mutually agree to a time. Say it could be 20 minutes, it could be 40 minutes. If it's a grudge match, uh, an opponent could say until one is, one is defeated. So you could go on for an hour or two hours. Matches have, have been known to go for one match, a legendary match, went 11 hours. The, the rules are to turn him on his back once and once the mud uh, soil touches it leaves an imprint two shoulders touch the ground it's over finished you can't do waist rolls or bridges or anything like that mm. uh, Punjabi wrestling is once you're on the back it's over finished you've lost
back in the days there was no weight classes so what you normally used to have was the heavier guys used to enter you used to get lighter people but it was more known for people which were heavier a bit bigger to enter the tournaments competitions always generally took place in rural villages around all around Punjab in in the Pakistan side and the uh, Indian side and there was re there was reasons behind that there if your ca uh, crop failed one year some holy man would say you need a uh, a competition to ward off evil spirits whenever you had a mela a fair villages would go there and the main attraction would be a particular wrestler palawan from their area who would kind of lock horns as it were with another rival who would be from another area people kind of come in and they're kind of introduced and you see them you know all kind of walking with this kind of the strides their particular ways of going around first as it's like you know I'm the bull in the stadium and the other guy is going to come in and they're not going to they're just hovering around and making each other it's it's a kind of ritual is I'm I'm here you know and uh, people are kind of going crazy and they haven't even started it could be like a 3 4 day festival uh so it, it was there was never no time limit to it back in the days they used to see who's the strongest athlete and the early way to do that was to see who's actually going to last the longest in their kara uh so there was no time limit maybe 2 3 hours they might wrestle for 2 3 4 hours the moment one wrestler has pinned the other one down that village is going to go crazy they're going to lift this palwan on their shoulders and go around the circuit there's people are kind of throwing money notes uh and it it's it's in that sense it was a uh, something that raised income as well to kind of uh, subsidize you know their kind of food their lifestyle etc the village level would be a fair a, a, a small fair and they would have a little small a few matches a dangal would be the region or the district or n national palwans or the strong wrestlers would come together and that was in essence what a dangal was dangal nobody knows nobody they come from all over india they don't know each other so there are people there who manage the dangal they write the names down and they fix the matches they 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 match them the dangal are announced in newspapers you know they may not be every year. and one year is allahabad next year maybe some other town or the big city some competitions are centuries old over 200 wrestlers would turn up from all over far away places delhi and bombay and calcutta and kashmir northern jammu all over india they come to the punjab hundreds and thousands of people would look at um, would watch a match and a wrestler would be called a pehlwan ji it's a great respect and uh, pehlwan would travel and sit together and uh, they had a aura of strength and uh, dignity about them 20 minutes in the dangal after that they have to separate them draw decision on you know win or no win just draw doesn't matter they show on what they know 20 minutes is a long time for the wrestler to show is uh, what he can do So Carlo is is in a sense a uh, a training place or a club for wrestling or other sports. It can be considered uh, to some athletes a home or a second home. The Akara is a very sacred place for a wrestler. It it's steeped in history. It has a um, religious ceremony. Um Pehlavans uh, um put turmeric into the uh, kara. They put mustard oil in it. They um they sieve the soil and make it very fine so there's not a single stone in it so the way to the hunda khada patna ut tel tul chona hogiya rasma hundiya matha tekna guruan da naam lena odon baad ch phir zor karna phir khade nu swaga dena baad ch phir duve din phir taaja gudna onu gudd ke phir ode vich zor karne shuru karne matha tek ke it can be considered a school 
because you learn a lot of lessons there to become a, a, a new person, a grown-up adult, uh, where you become a champion, where you learn about discipline. So it is considered a school as well. Nobody must go in there with their shoes. No non-wrestler can get into the Akhada. It's very strict regime. The Indian Akhada had a very strong loyalty system. They would adhere to the coach or the club. If you betray the club and go to another club, generally that was looked down upon and frowned upon. ਕਦੇ ਕੋਈ ਪਲਵਾਨ ਆਪਣੇ ਉਸਤਾਦ ਦੇ ਮੂਰੇ ਬੋਲਦਾ ਨਾ ਸੀ ਅਜੇ ਪੇਦੇ ਮੂਰੇ ਕਿਤੇ ਜਵਾਬ ਦੇ ਲੂਗਾ ਉਸਤਾਦ ਦੇ ਮੂਰੇ ਕਦੇ ਜਵਾਬ ਨਹੀਂ ਦਿੰਦਾ the coach would teach him all the tricks of the trade all the secrets of the trade they were jealously guarded by each club and each coach but they would only impart those onto very favorite wrestlers who they thought would make it and they were always uh, uh, you can call them gurus uh, and they used to teach you what to do how to tackle each other how to protect yourself and how to defend yourself and how to attack to get the winning uh, proposal training when we were training we used to train twice a day early in the morning about 5 o'clock uh, and then in the evenings about uh, 6 o'clock Uh, this used to depend where you are uh, because of the weather like in india the weather uh, very hot in the hot summers so it was always good to wrestle before the sun comes out and uh, uh, first we in the old days when we started we used to do dand batics uh, like uh, squats and uh, dips and then after that do practice and they do typically 500 tiger bends and 2000 squats and they would put oil mustard oil on all their body you know if you look in the old pel one photographs none of them had any hair on their body they would go with the malish malish meaning massage with mustard oil and they do that after to to relieve those muscles of um, tension and um, you'd feel, and you'd get supple very supple you need to be very supple to get out of certain moves like headlocks all they are doing all day long is the indian style kind of sit ups and press ups and picking up a stone and putting it down you know then they would move to indian clubs what we call uh, in punjabi wrestling or mungliya they are great big meal mills mm-hmm. meals they call them in persian but they're um they're great big clubs and you and you swing them over your shoulders it's an old indian training and when the brits came and they called them uh, indian clubs they were really really heavy they that was one lifting stones up with your head that was another um uh, pulling pulling um uh, they call it a swaga in punjabi i don't know what they call it in english it's a plank of heavy wood that you drag around on a on a uh, behind you with it which is tied up with a rope you drag it around the akhada to make it flat and then ideally somebody would sit on it so you're pulling your own body weight and and there is lot of resistance training idi kasrat zyada se ke dand te baithka te hor dumbbell dumbbell bhi la lende hege par dand te baithka te daudna khet baaye khet de vich bhajde hunde hi bulwan like me my dad wanted me to be a wrestler i started when i was 13 years old no tea no silly no junk food no nothing in the beginning right from the beginning you know the certain things you can eat the other you can't not allowed and uh, so this pre- preparation is from the beginning but the one thing that everybody every wrestler drinks in india and it's famous with wrestlers is the sardai the the, the almond milk drink mm. almonds yeah. they will grind them uh on the stone and uh, well now we have machines to do them and they used to uh, take the juice of uh, these badams and uh, drink that after uh, uh, they have done practice because this used to give them a lot of strength the number one thing was ghee the butter you know it it was kind of well it was an expensive commodity in those days uh 
but it was also available. And, you know, the reputations were such that people would say he could drink a kilo of ghee. And, you, you know, we kind of amazed at these things, but that's, that was their kind of diet. And the Punjabi Pehlawans in particular were not vegetarian. They, were, uh, they would have goat's meat mm. made in a great big, uh, like a karahi. Yeah. And this would bubble all day long in the evening, they'd start it off. And they would drink the uh, broth of that, the, 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 the soup. We had meat, some sort of meat, mainly bacon and pigs, you know, every fourth day. Yeah, normally we drink milk and uh, yogurt and uh, makhani, mm -hmm. butter, yeah, yeah. yeah, unsalted butter. Mm -hmm. We had as much as we wanted. I remember the scene, my kind of a, a friend used to live in Bombay and some of these wrestlers and kabaddi players would go and stay with him in Bombay. He phoned me up once, he said, I'm really fed up. He said, I've got four of them in my flat. From the morning, all they're doing is press-ups, press-ups, press-ups. And he said, I've had to buy, you know, 12 chickens every day. That's all their diet is, chicken, meat, press-ups, sit-ups, chicken. <laughs> Wrestlers had a very simple life. Um, it was all rest and food and train, rest, food and train generally boring and they never had any um, ambitions of getting married until they retired because they believed that the marriage would distract his uh, complete energy. It was, that was popularly believed. Traditionally they had very very bad lives. Uh, in retirement they would, uh, their knees would pack up, um, their cartilages were gone due to, doing, due to doing thousands and thousands of squats. Uh, they fell on hard times. The great gamma was about my height, I think he was about an inch and a half taller than me, but he was the world champion, the most famous one in Punjab, for skill and, and for his size. He was very, very good. I only wish he went to the Olympic Games, but he didn't, and that's another story. The, the Polish man, Polish wrestler, Zbysko, Zbysko, he had a bout in London, 1910 with the gamma. He was, he, he, he couldn't get up. He was. On, uh, on the floor. He was good at floor wrestling, you know. Was, Gama couldn't beat him. Gama was, um, tried his best. He went on for he, two, he, two, two hours or more. I don't know the actual. Um, then Maharaja Patiala got in touch with Vasco and uh, the board was fixed, arranged mm -hmm. for 1928. After that, Gamma retired, and Gamma beat him within a minute. How you get superheroes now? They were superheroes in, in those days. That's what they were considered uh, to be looked up to as. Three miles from my village, there was another wrestler called Didar Singh Sodhi. He was friends of Kikar Singh. They were very close friends. Oh, people gathered around them to see Kikar Singh. Yeah, they want to see a great name. Then somebody decided, uh, let's bring a camel. And they sit on a camel, yeah? And uh, they go around and everybody can see them. Here everybody can't see them. Lack of space, you know? They sat on the camel, the, the, the camel couldn't get up. Because they're both very heavy. And they, they were old people in those in their fifties, and the uh, camel couldn't get up. After 1947, India became a republic, and the maharajas uh, became citizens, and they became ordinary citizens, and their lands were confiscated, and they were no longer maharajas. It was finished and forever. The Akhadas lost the royal patronage, thus funds, money, and looking after and pensions, etc., etc. So the support system just vanished, crumbled underneath their very eyes. When the partition happened, the Muslims went, migrated to uh, the Pakistani side of Punjab mm. and the rivalry was gone, just like that, in, in a week. And once there was no rivalry, there was, the, 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 com the competitive spirit declined and there was no, the ap interest declined. <laughs> The 
all the all the Indians that came here first, the Punjabis, mainly Punjabi. They were uh, not wanted in India. There were no jobs, no no industry, no nothing. So they came for uh, to earn a living. Yeah. They were more. They had to send the money home yeah. to their families. Yeah, um, my father. Uh, left India to come to the UK in uh, early 60s, really to maybe find a, a better life. Uh, he wanted to build a better future for ourselves. And like I say, he carried, carried the, sort of like, you know, some of the traditions uh, with him. So the wrestling became one of them. My father came in 1958. And um, when the Punjabis from the P Punjab of our region, the Dwaba region, first migrated to England, the, generally the idea was only for uh, a couple of years or a short term and when they arrived here during the f we have a fair in Bailey's Park every year and there turned up a Punjabi wrestler and there was another one there was a rival and they said well why don't you have a match at the fair and we'll put money on it all the like Sikh guys um, they used to go to work a lot of them had to work in building sites uh, you know, a mixture of different works, heavy work. So they'd go to work and they would come in the evening and train in the park and then they would, you know, go, go to his club and they would basically wrestle. Father was approached by a wrestling club in Punjabi wrestlers and my father still used to do uh, the uh, sit-ups and push-ups push that he used to do in India. And uh, my father said that um, he's too busy, he's working 60 hours a week in, in the bakery to raise his family and send money back. And there was a lot of, there was a mortgage to pay, there was raising the children, sending money back and trying to get established. It was a, it was a hard period. So my father never took the opportunity to go to the club. That was the reason why not so many participated in the early 60s. By the mid 60s, you know, you had more people coming in. Uh, they, their interest was in wrestling and kabaddi, which were two related sports. And my earliest memories uh, was in the Dominion Center. We had a, a wrestler, Pahlavan, called Dara Singh. He was king of the world. He was the champion of the world, as far as we were concerned. We are talking about the mid-60s. The Dominion Center had a, uh, uh, you know, it was a kind of a cinema with a ring there. And this guy came to... Uh, wrestle there. This, the whole cinema was kind of full. We're looking at 1200 seats, people standing, and obviously Dara Singh was going to win. Anything else was unthinkable. He later went on to make films. Instead of songs, Dara Singh would wrestle three or four people, and that's what we went to see. It was like our kind of a film. They were great role models. Dara Singh uh, was a professional wrestler and he became a movie star. Mm. He was tall, I think he was six foot four. He was world champion in professional wrestling, which is different to what we did. But nevertheless, he became a movie star and he was very, he was, he was India's Hercules. The other memory is that on Saturdays, I mean, nobody had uh, televisions in those days. Uh, but we had kind of uh, Granada and Rediffusion shops which would rent TVs. So most of the people weren't on enough income to buy TVs so, or to rent them. Uh, so you, what you had is people like me and older men, I was a child, school, we would stand in front of the TV rental shop at 4 o'clock on Saturday to watch wrestling for one hour you'd have 10, 20 people in front of most rental TV rental shops in South Hall watching TV, watching wrestling. I see the way he's pointing now. I don't think he really likes anybody that much. Prince Martin, now that is a big Indian, a mm. big man. And I'm told he makes quite a lot of pictures in America, in uh, India. In India. He does a lot of Indian films. In 1966, uh, it so happened that uh, Dara Singh and his brother Randhava and their other wrestlers, Sodagar Singh, came to this country and I met them. And then 
uh, they were somehow impressed with me as well. So uh, I had uh, open opportunity to go and join them in India and practice more and then I started my career and uh, I had to wrestle uh, this uh, freestyle wrestling as we used to call it mm -hmm. and I did a match in Singapore first match as a professional wrestler then of course after that in India in other countries uh, countries like uh, United States Canada we used to jump around uh, if we go to do Punjabi wrestling uh, in the melas and all that, yali, yali and all that. So when I used to be on these uh, uh, wrestling rings, I did some dancing as well, jumping around. So there is always influence uh, what you have been doing in your younger age or in your, young, in, in your own community. The park used to be kind of pretty full. A lot of kabaddi players, and you had the same thing. They did not change even when they came into this country, you know. Like I say, the same press-ups, the same sit-ups. We got four or five Punjabi wrestlers together and we started wrestling in the parks in the evenings, in the summer months, in preparation for the Kabaddi tournaments. Uh, but it was primarily fitness and um, only about four or five techniques, very Punjabi Desi style very uh, holding the neck, pushing um, fireman's carry and them sort of things. In the changing rooms, what would happen is uh, these guys would say to me, Shote, uh, like the young one, come here, you know. And there's this ritual about a massage. Wrestlers have got a big time massaging each other. So they say, you know, do my massage. And you think, oh my God. And it's master, it stings if you ever, I mean, I, they used to get me to do it and I'm thinking, oh my God, because these guys were big, right? you don't want to mess with them. <laughs> so my friends are trying to do their massage and they're lying on the concrete. They're not feeling anything. And they're saying, what are you doing? I told you to do it. And we're saying, we're doing it. Because they can't, feel, they want us to put more pressure and more strength in this thing. And you know, your, your hands just become stuck. The fingers get stuck in one place after you finish with these guys. And then they would say, oh, you, you're useless, go, go away, right? I think when the uh, generation came over, like my dad and everyone, they, they carried these sports over. So when they see community, uh, at these local events, they would have the rock, uh, lifting, the kabaddi training, the wrestling, they would have these events and that would bring the Sikh communities together, uh, you know, at, at the summer mill. What the Sikh temples started doing from about the late uh, 60s is to hold tournaments. Uh, and what they would have in tournament would be Asian tournaments, Asian teams coming from all over the country and it was almost an honour for the town to have a tournament and people looked forward. It was a set timetable every year. Gravesend, Birmingham, Leicester, Coventry, Bradford, Southall, Barking. They were kind of the regular uh, annual tournaments. And they went on throughout the 70s, throughout the 80s, 90s. In my wrestling time, at that time there used to be very few cars. Uh, m none of my friends had a car, we used to travel up and down, spending our own money, own petrol, no one used to help us. Ranjit Gill had an old Datsun that you wouldn't go further than 10 miles in because you wouldn't trust it. But we went to Manchester in it. We didn't have the money to stay in hotels so we used to stay, sleep in the car with the seat reclined back with the engine on. And we'd switch it off and then we'd switch it back on and the heater would come on and we'd switch it back off and this would go on through the night. And in the morning, we would be so exhausted, we would have dark eyes and would go into the match and wrestle, and in my case, lose, and then come back again. The whole community from different towns would want to come and see the wrestling and the kabaddi. Same as uh, in India, on grass, and you have the kabaddi ring and everybody would sit outside the circle and you have the same kind of hysterical crowd 
we are talking about, I have seen, you know, 3,000 people easily watching this kind of bout. And you had the same kind of uh, frenzied crowd. They're shouting and they they almost, as soon as, you know, you get a sense that they're going to be a riot here because one wrestler is going to pin the other one down and the people from his town are going to disrupt this act because they know their man's going to losing. As soon as he's won, oh my God, you, you have to be there to kind of see the kind of share kind of uh, uh, level of excitement. I, I can't describe it, but it's like the whole town has won. They're carrying this guy around and people are throwing pound notes, five pound notes. Alcohol revolves around the whole thing. And we should, we would see in tournaments, uh, you know, car parks full of cars and people have bought uh, pots of ready-made lamb and chicken and with bottles of whiskey. And all the supporters are getting kind of paralytic, even sometimes often before the match has started. I think in the traditional wrestling, there used to be quite a few you could get. You could quite possibly get 100 wrestlers. Um, but again, it depending on where he was in the country. He was, if he was somewhere remote, then obviously you get a lot less. It was just thousands of people. We didn't know what to expect. Obviously, my dad didn't tell us anything. We were just going to go and wrestle. And he was on grass. So completely different feeling, uh, completely different audience. Uh, it's just outside and let's get on with it. And the difference about the middle is you get rewarded with money. So when I, when I won, there's, there's a, um, it's called a patka. They have like a turban and, and the turban's one of, uh, is, for Sikhs is a big respect. So they give you a turban and in the turban there's money tied up. You walk around, you do like a lap of honour. So you do a lap of honour uh, and everyone's giving you money. And the whole reason they're giving you that money is not more than anything. It's, it's an old, old way of saying, well done. You know, well done, you performed well, here you go. It's like a gift. But 16 was my, the first experience was actually going to a Kabaddi tournament and um, challenging any wrestler to wrestle or any person to wrestle me uh, in, in a Kushti style, Kushti rules. And I just turned up um, and they announced my name and, and announced my weight and whoever challenged me. And I had a challenge and it was pretty shocking at first to see um, what, what, what would happen to me at first as I was getting slapped about which I didn't expect. Uh, it was a bit of a nasty surprise. Uh, but as soon as I got the guy on his back, it was very, very quick, and they stopped the match and said I won. And I was very shocked to see that, because normally in, in like mat wrestling, you have to hold him for three seconds. This, I literally just put him on his back and, and won. Um, so it was a, that sense was a positive experience, because I won. I ended up getting money from random people who were heavily influenced by alcohol, uh, which is typically <laughs> the, the norm, you could say walking around proud, getting money, uh, which is a very happy feeling at 16 years old, winning about 200, 150 pounds. Get more experience in training, they, they had to come to uh, freestyle wrestling clubs in London or in Birmingham or in the Midlands or in Manchester. And they combine and they improve their skills uh, from the freestyle to wrestle in all these tournaments. First, I used to live in Wolverhampton, and there was no club nearby. I used to go to Birmingham, 20 miles away, up and down, traveling one hour, then spending two, three hours there, then coming home late. After that, 1980, I moved to Slough. We built our own club here, myself and Ranjit Sandhu, and a few other friends to get together. We started with grassroots club wrestling. Uh, we worked very hard. Because we, we always went to London and other faraway places to learn. Mm. And I wanted to make it local for those who are interested. There was a time there was only me and my son left on the mat. There was no interest. But then we, came, we persevered. And now we've got 50 people in our junior class and um, 30 in our senior. Particularly the Slough Club and a club in Birmingham that managed to develop uh, quite strong team and uh, um, two particular athletes from Birmingham who they've competed for Great Britain and they might but they competed in the Olympic Games uh, they were very successful as well in the Punjabi wrestling 
go back about 10, 15 years, you wouldn't get, in my eyes, I don't think you would get Sikh families pushing Sikh girls to go into wrestling as a sport. I don't really see it. But now, you know, it's changed and now a lot of Sikh families are pushing their daughters, their girls to get into wrestling and I think it's fantastic. I was just sitting there and I was like, well, why can't girls wrestle? And and then I asked my mum, she said, oh, we can talk to the coach. So we talked to the coach and he said, well, you can join in, but I would only join in with the warm up for now. But then I didn't like that. I wanted to be part of the whole class. So then I started searching some clips of female wrestlers and then I was like, oh, wow, I want to do that and I want to win gold in competitions. Then when that film came out, um, Dungle, uh, you know, recently, there was a big turn of, uh, of girls, women wrestling in India. And we've also had a few uh, in Wolverhampton as well. So they watch that film and they, you know, they get really excited. Yeah, we want to do some of that. We want a medal. Yeah, I guess, because like at school, boys are scared of me. <laughs> Before boys used to like take a makeup, we tease you. Now no one says anything to me. In India, Punjabi wrestling, it has obviously died out. So wrestling itself is expanding, but the old traditional Kushti type of wrestling, it's, it's decreasing um, because there's, you know, there's not a lot of limelight towards it. With the Olympic style wrestling map, you've got a lot of more, you, you've got so many more famous wrestlers. Balwani wrestling is basically, I would say, is a bit of a more of a slow wrestle and it's, it's technique, but it's more based on strength and endurance. When you go to freestyle on the mat, that's more of a fast, it's a point system. Yeah, you know, you, you have to depend on speed, technique, power, stamina. The bats are uh, shorter in time length and you get a bit of a rest. So it's more explosive. I personally think like Palawani wrestling is arguably boring compared to a freestyle wrestling match. Because a Palawani match can go on for three hours and that can just consist of two wrestlers just slapping each other on the neck and nothing actually happening. Uh, whereas freestyle wrestling is very fast paced, very action based, technical based. It's just fantastic to watch we're always going to have it in our culture and we're always going to do it um but as taking it to the next level due to like you know the mat wrestling olympics it's sort of it's sort of overshadowing the old balwani style there's not much difference i, I did a here mats yeah. you know went to the club various clubs and uh, no not much difference you get used to it in, in a few days but i don't understand in this uh, the wrestling here they, they lower down, they bend down too much. I don't know why they do that. They do like that. Yeah, 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 it's different. Why they do that? It's, Tell me why. Gamma like, was wrestling like that. Yeah. They stand like that. I don't know why they go down like that. I come to your club one day <laughs> and, and I show you. Yeah. And uh, you do any wrestling? Yeah, I do, yeah. Okay, I'll teach you a few things. Don't worry. Yeah.